All right. So welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. This is Brad. I'm your host from uh, Moonstream Crypto. And we're going to, as every week, we're going to cover the news. We're going to look at some charts and unpack whatever is happening in the uh, crypto markets here today. And if you're here with us live, uh, welcome. Let me just say hi to all of our M3 and Retire Rich members and Crypto Mastery members. So we have uh, Alex and uh, Mary. Hi, and Lee, Rennie, Timothy, Lisa, Todd, uh, David, Mitz, Doug. Okay, welcome you guys. All right, lots to unpack this week. And so I just wanted to pull up a chart here. We're going to start with the news like we usually do. and um, But really, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, it's one of the things I've been saying for years now. Most of you know that. Uh, we drew these lines weeks ago, if not months ago. And so... You know, while it's true, we didn't know for sure if we didn't have that massive up candle from these regions. But, um, you know, I was really inclined to and we were right that it would go right up to the golden pocket here, the Fibonacci extension and pull back. And it did. So, you know, new information equals new decision. The uh, news that we want to unpack here is, of course, and I've got monitors all around. So I'm not rolling my eyes at you guys. I'll uh, drop a picture of my new setup here. There's uh, monitors all around me. But. Um, more importantly, let's uh, she take a look at why that could be. FTX is now being rumored to be one of the bigger sellers on Grayscale. So Grayscale, now we're hearing, has been you know, sold billion dollars plus of, well, billion dollars now um, from the their trust. Now, the early narrative was that was because they were in profits and they were in lockup period from when they bought much lower and they were prevented from selling their shares and so now the early narrative was a little bit different than what is now believed to be true because if you have a longer term game and you bought down around 10 or fifteen thousand on the gbtc trust huge much higher tax consequence for selling so it's more likely that the people more in profits were not selling and it was more of the uh, recent holders that wanted to limit their exposure and potentially move their holdings over into a different etf with lower fees uh, Grayscale incorrectly assumed that their one and a half percent fee would uh, would be counterbalanced by people not wanting to pay the capital gains on their gains. So, <clears throat> pardon me, but a lot of people that so maybe didn't have as many gains were willing to do that to jump over into the much lower fees that uh, the other ETFs have, like BlackRock and Fidelity, Vanguard, Vanek, etc. So, if you're wondering what's going on, that was the uh, early story. Now, new information is emerging. That uh, according to Bloomberg, that FTX estate sold majority of their bankrupt holdings in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and that's rumored to be uh, over a billion dollars. I read, <clears throat> and so um, anyway, that that's all we're going to unpack here. We'll dive in a little bit deeper into it. So here's the thing: back to the chart. This pullback was to be expected. The you know the news. You know, oh, the news always seems to fit what the charts are already telling us, which was in this upward trending channel here that uh, this was due to pull back anyway, not only because of these reasons, but because of the, again, that Fibonacci golden pocket here. And if you're not familiar with how those are drawn, it's just a, from the high to the swing low, that's right up to the 0.618, just touched it barely. There's a thin sliver here. I'll just change it in my settings because you guys can see this. And of course, we talk about this in detail in our Wednesday class, the uh, M3 Active Trader. And uh, by the way, I'm going to invite you guys to a free training I'm doing this Thursday at 8 p.m. If you want to sign up for some new information where we'll, we will dive deeper into this. But uh, so here's that Fib Golden Pocket extension here, which it just touched right up to. I'm going to make sure I drew this uh, correctly here. And Fibs are very interesting if you're not already using them. It also called the uh, last market cycle high from the previous cycle. So that's interesting. Also gives us some really interesting targets for this upcoming bull market that we have outlined and we cover in tomorrow's class as well. But here we go. So right up to that 0.618, many of you guys already know this, but uh, so I had these lines drawn. I had them drawn a little farther out uh, to be able to see them clearer. But this, uh, this here, like pulling back to the 38K level and then getting a bounce is very likely at uh, to some degree now uh, probably what happens is we get a lower high and then we drop down into potentially to test that 32k level uh, it remains to be seen you know we're still on this upward trending channel but we have to take a look at the dxy which we'll do a little bit later and uh we look at in detail on that uh, wednesday class so um just unpacking the news though and just real quick too we uh, just published this on trading view last night 
You guys can find me on just under Brett Fogel. If you Google Brett Fogel at trade or just trading view, Brett Fogel to pull up a lot of my analysis here. But uh, so the CME gap had filled last night. There was a CME gap right in this region here. It's kind of hard to see on this extended chart, but uh, because I have a widescreen and it sort of put it all condensed it a bit. But the, all of these CME gaps have filled. There is still one that hasn't filled, which is interesting. This one all the way back here in June of 2020, where there was a CME gap on a weekly basis right around 98.75 and uh, 97.50 right in that region. So um, I think that's one of the the 5% that will not fill. Uh, guys, if we go down sub 10,000 Bitcoin again, uh, we've got bigger things to worry about than CME gaps. Uh, I don't believe we ever see that. I don't believe the uh, this low ever gets taken out, this 15,000. And I was forecasting 16.5 region all the way back in here in May when people were saying, including uh, Dylan LeClaire of uh, uh, Bitcoin Magazine, I was saying we wouldn't go below 30K. That's uh, another story. Maybe I'll share that on Thursday. And uh, in a whale session at Bitcoin conference, I asked him, what would you say to people like me who think we go to 20,000 and lower? And he sort of scoffed and uh, was fairly condescending. And all the whales in the room looked at me like, who let this guy in here? But of course, we were right and got down to that 16.5 level for several months and pushed up higher. So I do believe that's the low. We don't come back to revisit that. Uh, you know, this uh, 32K level, would make sense to revisit, but that would also mean we've broken the trend channel potentially. You know, unless we see this, we redraw it a little bit and we get, if we come straight down from here and we wick down to 32, that's your buy level. Not financial advice, but that's where I'll be buying in mass and going all in because, uh, well, as soon as our indicators show us that. So that's the other purpose of this class is showing our custom indicators that have been our guiding light all the way along. I get it. Everyone says they have special indicators, but we actually truly do uh, call the market top here and here and the uh, bottom right down in here on our monthly time frame. So with that out of the way, um, I'm going to just pull up the chat, you guys, by the way, and uh, make sure that I can see you. I've got a little cheat code here for how do I pull up chat. Uh, there are too many uh, different buttons here and... Um, I have no idea. So my uh, cheat sheet is too small to read. So let's see. Here's the chat. <clears throat> I don't see any questions. So um, all right, let's keep going. And uh, again, for some reason, all my tabs are showing up here. I'm not really my eyes at you guys. Uh, I got a lot of things going on over this way. Here we go. So uh, let's just dive into some more news here. So we've got some of uh, the uh, crypto stories. Now I'm trying to hide the uh, task bar. This thing is a bit annoying and sometimes will not uh, disappear. So I'm going to move it down to the bottom. And um, so let's see, Bitcoin dips below 40K, BTC ETF sell-offs. We already covered that. This is just crypto news and um, trying to cover the basis. I like crypto panic the most as a news aggregator. So let's just jump back over here and see what the more timely news is. So we have, let's see, Giant Whale sells all of his altcoins at a loss due to a stop loss. Um, that's the problem, stop losses, you guys. You know, you want to have emergency stop losses, but be willing to take that loss. And often these market makers tend to, if they see a big area of stop losses and sell orders, what do they do? These uh, scam wicks, they'll drop it down, take out the stops, and then they'll rally it back higher. So it's a bit of an art and a science. And uh, often that's what happened. They're going for liquidity so they can fill a large buy order. So we won't dive into that too much. Uh, let's see. I know a few people who are at Davos. Crypto pushes case for decentralized AI. Um, I want to I want to stick with some timely news that could uh, move the market here. Let's see. Somebody accusing Bitcoin mining uh, to a uh, where was it here? Uh, it to a penny stock ring, kind of making a comment about Hut Eight, one of the biggest public miners out there. So um, let's see. I don't see a whole lot here. Let's just jump over to what Daily Hoddle, see what we see on this one. And uh, if there are any topics you guys want me to cover, let me know. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube on the uh, replay, please like and subscribe to this. And we'll be doing more content, uh, more timely content here this year as we uh, move into the next bull run. So history suggests a massive Bitcoin correction underway. Look, guys, we've been saying this for months. Um, this is not a massive Bitcoin correction. A lot of this is clickbait. This is a normal correction for Bitcoin. And uh, I'll pull up a chart just showing that. There's nothing abnormal about this at all. So we'll be looking to buy the dip at 38K and 32K. Uh, conversation over. Okay, so um, Ben Cowan's a good analyst, uh, nothing against Ben, but a lot of this is just to get attention and eyeballs so we don't need to unpack that. 
crypto market's likely to go ballistic in 2024 with all coins outshining Bitcoin analysts, uh, Jason Pizzino. He's pretty good also. So this is interesting. And uh, alt call, altcoins outshining Bitcoin. I want to. I'm going to open that up. I want to see which ones he's saying. Certainly, ETH and Solana would be a good contenders. Phantom Coin we like a lot. Link, Chainlink, and Compound. I would agree. So when he says altcoins, I imagine they're the higher tier altcoins. There are some making their way up the ranks, sort of Solana killers, as they say, with Say and Sui, and uh, the payment uh, coins. The speed of the the transaction speed war is on everybody. Solana was a huge winner back in uh, 2021 when we first recommended it in August of 2021 at $35 because they claimed they could do 50,000 transactions per second. And uh, and then they had sort of they had DDoS attack and had some issues there, but they're venture back. That's a strong company to back. Now the war is on, but other companies claiming to do hundred thousand transactions, five hundred thousand transactions. Recently, I read a story. There's a Russian chain, Russian built chain that can do a million transact. I don't know, guys. That's a lot. So, um, but we're seeing those wars. Companies like uh, Metis has had a huge run, also in the transaction speed race. Uh, we have Cadena as another one. We have all these like Sui and Say and the old Phantom Coin ZK rollups. That would be a layer two and even layer three solution. And then there's also Bitcoin, always Bitcoin. The Lightning Network is not far behind. So I think that's a big narrative this year is the transaction wars. We'll see more and more of that. So we'll have a look at that and uh, what they say. Let's see, Bitcoin setting up for price explosion. If pattern plays out, uh, you know, I, I've already covered that, you know, off of the, we'll look at that in the charts for sure. Let's uh, open that up here, see what that says. Bitcoin ETF could have Bitcoin price higher, greater heights. Um, yeah, I mean, that's going to come over time. Everyone thought that the $2 billion that BlackRock allegedly had already ready to go was going to come in on day one. And of course, that's not the case. They don't want to buy at the top. I heard they deployed $500 million, but they're going to sit on the rest by the dip. And when we get down on these lower levels and our indicators start showing us the buy signals, I'm going to show you examples of that. That's when we go in. Areas of interest, 38K, 32K, but I'm going to wait for our indicators, the early reversal indicator, and the trend strength indicator to go green. That's our um, that's our our entry, and of course our trade success checklist. I'll give you guys a link how you can get that for free. That's also our secret weapon and what we use for when more of our indicators aligned. So that's the long and short of it. But uh, in the end of the day, um, that's going to be an excellent place, if not the place. So mark my words, buying this dip when it happens will be the best time in history without a time machine, obviously, but to get in to these markets. Now, I do think we come back and pull back into February. There's some uh, trouble on the horizon going into March, but I think from like mid-March going into the halving is going to be our safety zone and really the time to layer in. Now, barring any new information, barring any uh, world war or scary stuff like that. But if we do have something like that, buying the capitulation dip would also similarly be an excellent area kind of like the covid crash dip that we all are familiar with so let's see uh, and many people are many people are talking about a macro bull market from here and that the cycle is not over the super cycle as it were i don't know i don't know we could see a left slanted parabola this this uh, having cycle and there's more and more people under the radar including myself who believe that could be true and uh, we cover that in more detail on tomorrow's class so we just have to see and let's see uh, some fines on violating Bank Secrecy Act. Let's see. Trader says one large cap crypto looks way stronger. Um, and uh, some anonymous trader. Let's see. FTX trading arm Alameda drops its lawsuit against Grayscale. They'd have no leg to stand on for firing lawsuits. Um, no right to. Let's see. Binance launches a per perpetual contract. All right. We're getting into the weeds here. Elizabeth Warren. I uh, don't need to get into that. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll get into these individually. I want to just sort of get to the highlights and the headlines. Um, Barron's here. I'm not really. I'm just going to skim. Well, we have our own watch lists here. I just something I just set up. The BITI, by the way. Okay, the short Bitcoin. That's interesting. And the IBIT. I've, I've added the symbol for BlackRock's ETF. Uh, we're starting to tick higher on a one-hour basis uh, last night, so um, interesting to see if that starts seeing an uptick, and that would be an early indication, potentially, of money coming in, of that that uh, ETF money coming into 
the ETFs market. So I'll be watching that as sort of the North Star because BlackRock will be the leader with the most money. And um, the reason that's going to take time, by the way, is aside from BlackRock, uh, you know, most of these other funds, now that they have permission, they've got to get in in front of their RIAs, the registered investment advisors, say, go push Bitcoin, call your clients. They've got to call their clients and say, hey, you should buy Bitcoin. So this is, they're going to have to get the money and then deploy it. So I think that is going to deploy and um, play out over this year, not right away. All right, so crypto markets likely to go ballistic in 2024 with all coins outshining Bitcoin. Yeah, this guy, um, Jason Bazzino, he has uh, one of the um, uh, super cycle, longer term macro bull cycles where it kind of dips and then really takes off. We'll see. I'm much more near term of a trader and we're watching for our indicators that call the top of the market to get out. I mean, I have my targets of how high I think we go, but in the end of the day, um, our indicators essentially see what most people don't see and follow the footsteps of the elephants, the smart money, the whales, and the Wyckoff distribution, whatever you want to call it, we're going to know because it nailed it last time. And we'll also be watching the Pi Cycle Top, which I also uh, did a study on on my Trading View channel and we cover it tomorrow if you'd like to join there. So again, if you're liking some of this information here, please like and subscribe to the channel. We've doubled our subscribers here, so uh, good news. <laughs> We're up to 175. Let's get that up to uh, 250 at least and get the ball rolling. Um, Pizzino thinks that having, which is currently slated to happen uh, April 18th, and uh, could pause any ongoing correction, right? So the correction that we're having and may continue to have, the having is going to um, kind of get everybody back in the game. I do have a chart I'll share tomorrow as well. Maybe I can pull up today, kind of showing uh, the map of when the having is and when we should see that start to rise. And is also pointing out that the election uh, could also be a big catalyst because they're going to pump a lot of money into the economy and continued quantitative easing if they extend the bank term funding program, which is a sort of hmm, um, silent uh, way for quantitative easing, a stealth way where they're pumping billions of dollars into the uh, markets. So, you know, um, there we'll, we'll cover that a little bit more. There's also when the BTFB runs out March 12th, the we may see some more bank failures. And uh, which may force the Fed to drop rates in the March meeting. So that's a big question mark. I think, you know, Arthur Hayes makes a strong case where we dip hard into that bank failures, scary times, sell, 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 drop rates. Boom, we go higher, uh, at least initially. So we'll have to see. I do exercise caution here. I don't recommend buying anything Right now, even if we get a bounce at 38K, uh, I advise caution and to take profits into that bounce because uh, there's a 50-50 chance that we drop we drop lower back to that 32K. Some are saying 35K to front run it, but we'll look at that 32K level, which is such an important support resistance area that has not been retested. And typically, those levels are retested in the prior cycles. So uh, hopefully, guys, uh, this is all making sense to you. There's a lot to take in, I know. Uh, but he's also saying that we've seen from the elections in the past, this is when markets go ballistic, right? So, um, and sometimes it's right before, sometimes it's right on time. Stay alert coming into quarter three of 2024. You know, the, the existing administration is going to do whatever they have to to stay in power. That's what they always do. Pump the markets, pump money into the markets. Money goes into risk on assets, tech stocks, crypto, et cetera. So, and then if they uh, lose, it's someone else's problem. Oh, I'm not going to get into politics here, but um, let's see. So this person saying correcting to 37K. I don't, I don't see 37. I see 38K. And uh, we could wick down, but um, as of today, we're right down that range. We're losing 40K as the bottom line. Uh, he says uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Prime to experience gains this year, but also thinks altcoins will outperform. Let's see which altcoins. He doesn't get into which altcoins. There's a video. So cliffhanger, uh, no surprise. <clears throat> well, we'll look at what we like here and uh, give you some ideas um, that I, I'm watching which I mentioned a few of already. Bitcoin setting up for price explosion and according to the Glassnode, Glassnode founders. I don't pay a lot of attention 
to the on-chain metrics because it is like it's definitely going down a massive rabbit hole. And uh, ordinary, m most of the time you're going to see the uh, price moving patterns in the charts. So it's interesting to know what other people say about the glass node, but um, and I'm not going to go too far into it. So they're talking about FIB extensions. Yeah, I'm a big FIB guy, but let's see. Bitcoin has moved to the 618, 6.618 Fibonacci extension. That's interesting. Uh, from, uh, no, let's see. What year is he looking at? 2025. Uh, we're going to look at this. I don't know that this is correct because we went to the 3.618 from the prior cycle high to the last cycle. So I don't know where he's getting a 61618 where how he's drawing that. But, uh, so he's projecting similar levels though. I don't know where he's getting a 6.6618. That's a 3.618 takes us to 110, sorry, 155. The 3.618 takes us to 210, which is my higher level target. So I, I don't know, this guy's drawing these a bit strangely. Um, that's really strange on that. So um, I think he's wrong, <clears throat> but uh, maybe he's drawing in a different way, but uh, we'll, we'll look at that and draw and show you how these work. For those of you that are new to it, so uh, anyway, um, what else here? I, uh, I, I'm not going to go into it. We'll look at it on our charts. So, and nothing much here. Not a lot going on in the news yet today, guys. How are we doing? Half an hour in. Let's see if we can find anything on Cointelegraph, and then we'll I'll go from there. So, let's see. 600 million GBTC offload. Let me just back up on that. Uh, where did that go? And then JP Morgan downgrades Coinbase stock. That was last week. Two hours ago. That was That's old news, though. Coinbase underweight following spot Bitcoin ETF approvals. All right. Uh, no, uh, nothing really new there. Here's that one we were just looking at. 600 million GBTC offload. And uh, we've already covered that. So, um, okay, well, cool. Let's get dive into some charts here. There's not a lot of relevant news here today. So there we go. Let's get rid of this, get back into the charts. But let me just show you the, let's go back to these Fibonacci's. That guy uh, was drawing this thing very strangely. So anyone that's familiar with that, with Fibonacci's, you know, uh, you normally don't go into those high fibs. So I'm going to put it back here on, you know what? I've got to get this uh, thing out of the way again. I can figure out how to turn off that uh, that thing. Now it's gone away. So here are the fibs, and it's going to draw it for just the golden pocket. So I have to change my settings real quick. And I've got different levels on that. Let's go to the uh, Fibonacci new defaults. So I don't even have this three points and the six four point six one eights and all that. That's that's much much less likely. And I've got a more in depth study on this. But look, from the two south twenty seventeen high down to the twenty eighteen low. Let me just move this over. Okay, what uh, what did we see? Okay, so 2017 to 2019, if we extend that out long enough, it took us exactly to the high in 2021 when we were telling people to get out of the markets. See that 3.618 right there. I know it's maybe a little bit hard to read because the charts are blurry when I'm on the camera here, but... Uh, Let's get rid of that one for now. We'll redraw that. But the 3.618 from the prior cycle high right down in here to the cycle low extended out took us to 65,000. Let's see. It's a little bit that I draw it exactly. You can uh, you gotta, uh, reconfigure it, fine tune these things a little bit sometimes. But it took us right to the market cycle high. 3.618, not 6.618. I don't know what those guys are looking at. So similarly, and here I've got a good old Gary Gensler here, the uh, ruiner of markets. Uh, you know, I should put Jim Cramer on there as well, because old Cramer came out on CNBC, uh, who is always wrong, and said, hey, I think Bitcoin's here to stay. Uh, so uh, they're the dynamic duo to pour cold water on the market rallies. But uh, here again is my now. So here's the Fibonacci extensions going into the uh, next bull market. And uh, again, I've got more detailed study on tomorrow's class. But I think very likely, 100%, I think that's a given. I'm sorry, 100,000 <clears> once we break new highs. Then uh, around 155,000 is uh, likely, probable. This up here, 3.618 takes us to about 210,000. Uh, I think that's possible, if not also likely. That would be when I would be selling, getting out of the markets, okay, at these three levels here. 
And uh, hopefully by then, Gary Gensler is no longer around. We'll have to see. We'll have a new uh, new crypto bad guy. Uh, let's see. I'll let somebody else in here. Okay. So um, moving right along, and uh, I see a question coming in from Perry. And um, by the way, if you guys want to join these classes live, if you're watching the replay, just go to moonstream.io and uh, you can scroll down to the bottom. Let me pull up the page here, moonstream.io. And you've got some of our other services that we offer down the bottom, the free services. We have a great monthly, uh, sorry, weekly newsletter on Mondays where we aggregate the news. You can sign up for that for free right here at moonstream.io. Also sign up for these classes, these weekly live crypto classes. So I think I just opened the image there. If we go click on that, just sign up, give us your name and email, and uh, we'll email you a link to join these classes every week at noon Eastern. Okay, so you have that. Also the Trader Success Checklist, uh, some more free resources. I'll be uh, going over that today. We have a new version, by the way, that my Myrene has just uploaded. So I'm gonna show you that, that's cool. I think it's, I think we have the newer, newish version here. And uh, this is, we'll, uh, we'll show you how that works as well. So I'll turn that off for now. And um, let me just get back to the question here. Also some other free reports you guys can get. The five mistakes that new, most of crypto investors make that pass in the future for Bitcoin, originally called Blood in the Streets. This I released in December of 2022 at the bottom of the bear market, telling people now is the time to buy when there's blood in the streets. And we were right. Bitcoin went up 100% from there in the following three months. And of course, uh, we have some other programs here. Um, I do want to briefly mention to you how you can sign up for the Thursday training and uh, where is that? That looks like this. And that is at moonstream.io slash free training. And that'll just redirect you to the actual page. But moonstream.io slash free training. And it'll take you this page. I'll drop it in the chat so you guys can sign up for that. You guys definitely want to show up there. We'll dive into this stuff a little bit more. And I'm going to share some of the coins I'm watching and some of the tools and techniques that we use here in our M3 Active Trader class. Uh, I couldn't find my M3 Active Trader hat today. I've got my uh, Retire Rich hat on. That's our, our higher level emerging markets uh, program. I'm not going to get into that here. But um, anyway, let's dive into the questions. I've got a general market question from Perry who asks, uh, do the market makers and the whales and or the whales uh, make the whole market drop in lockstep? Uh, let's see. I'll take I'll take this question in parts. And OK, well, so we'll read it all at once and then we'll go in parts. Big coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, mid caps, micros, memes, almost everything at once. Yes. And it seems too easily manipulated in a way. So the answer is um, is yes. And a lot of it comes from programmatic buying. And so the institutions and the organized players and market makers, when Bitcoin falters, they're going to be selling everything and they have advanced algorithms. It's probably AI based. It's not a human doing this, but they have advanced algorithms based on risk models and PhDs. So I saw, let me give you some context. There was a firm I was looking into and saw on the news that basically said they had determined how to deliver outsized gains for their clients and in the institutional markets. That means how to screw the retail client, you and me and everybody else. Uh, and I use that word loosely, but how to beat and take our money. And the way that these happen is these advanced algorithms. If you consider that an AI beat the best chess champion 20 years ago, right? And uh, imagine how much better it is now. So this other company that was basically getting uh, funded because they can deliver so much value in terms of profits from the institutional desks, which is taking our money, do you follow the money here? Then that's what they were basically claiming without saying it as such. So they've got rooms full of PhDs, quants, creating these algorithms. And so the market makers, who again are not people anymore, they are computers, they are AIs that continually monitor everything in the markets. So when Bitcoin falters, everything falters with rare exception. So that's when you see the sell-off. It is coordinated in the sense that that's how they manage risk. So they might say, we've got, we've raised $10 million or a billion dollars in the fund. This is what the hedge fund, uh, hedge fund managers do. 
And I know this because we're in talks to set up a hedge fund, a crypto hedge fund. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but I've known this before as well. And uh, so, so the risk managers are really probability managers. So a lot of this, again, is computerized. So when Bitcoin pushed up, started to sell off, a lot of computerized selling kicked in. Now, sometimes in the bull market, you see Bitcoin rally, Bitcoin dominance goes, the money is going there to catch that, that wave, that pump. Higher probability, less risk. But when Bitcoin peaks, what happens? The money flows into ETH and altcoins. So instead of getting into cash, which, which nobody wants, the uh, money, the profits from Bitcoin comes out. Bitcoin dominance falls. It goes into ETH, goes into the other layer ones. It's going to be Solana. It's going to be Chainlink and, and Compound, a number of others. And then those run and then profits come out of those. Then you see it filter into the other altcoins and uh, with lower market caps because people just want to ride that gravy train, compounding profits from bouncing around to the from the tier ones to the tier twos and the tier threes all the way down to the meme coins and the shit coins. That's when you know the market rally is over. You start to see Dogecoin pumping and all a lot of these micro caps and uh, the shit coins start pumping. OK, so that's what happens. And uh, so when there is a big market dump, you're going to see everything go down and everything red like we're seeing right now. So, uh, you know, you're you're a good hands right here. We've been forecasting this pullback for months. And let me just skin this storage AVEX phantom coin. Um, OK, we're getting close to where we see some good, good buying opportunities. Not quite there yet, but. Uh, let's see. These are slightly different charts than I cover on uh, tomorrow's class. Where we go a little deeper in the, the the XY and the macro side. But here, this chart, we've had this golden pocket marked on here as the top literally for months. OK, and this zigzag has varied a little bit. These things I had drawn it here. It did push up there. I thought we'd pump lower. It went more like this. But uh, we're in we're in to buy the dip range. Let me just take a quick look. We're not there yet. We have our ERI, which is bullish. And uh, by the way, I'll tell you how to learn more about these uh, indicators that we use, because when they align, they are almost 95 percent. And, uh, you know, there's always outliers. Nothing is 100 uh, percent. But you can see back here, our ERI triggered right there, followed by our TSI there. And then that was the market beginning of October, pushed all the way up. We are getting an ERI last week, but we pulled down the TSI is still red. This is no go zone. No go zone. My entry criteria and what we have on the trader success checklist is, is the ERI showing up green arrow and or do we have the TSI green and above the 20 line that if those aren't green for me, I'm not in. There are rare exceptions we'll talk about, but to get access to this trade success checklist for free, just go over the newer version. Go down here on the moonstream.io for the free checklist here. And uh, I'm going to pull up the latest version uh, because let's see. And this is not my uh, my real. Uh, uh, well, you do want to use your real email address, actually, because that's where it's going to be sent. Wait, what am I doing there? Last name. OK. And uh, you can email me. I may not see it. My spam filter eats everything. So there you go. And uh, download the checklist here. So basically, and that's not my login for my exchanges, by the way, if anyone's asking. Uh, highly recommend, by the way, public service announcement. Don't use your regular Gmail that you use for everything else as your login for your exchanges. Uh, there's a uh, there's a interesting scam going around by Coinbase where they'll send out saying a text saying that, hey, uh, this was initiated. Prepare for a phone call. Uh, never do that. Always look at the phone number and uh, compare it to online because uh, these scams are getting more and more insidious. So here, once you get to this point, you want to download the PDF because it's interactive and uh, you can basically now go through it. So let's go through this together. So here it was we have, is the ERI green and showing a green up arrow? Check. And is this green arrow above this 20 line uh, on the TSI? So once you have that, you have a score, the trading success score of two out of 21. Many of you are in the M3 trader class and uh, retire rich and uh, use this. Uh, how good are these indicators, you guys? So, um, and when you start getting a score of three or four or higher, uh, sometimes you get into six and sevens. That's 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 the time to get into the markets because uh, these have been so accurate. 
we aren't there yet. Okay. I want to see a deeper dip and a bounce. Give it a day or two. We'll also look at weekly timeframes to uh, see the extension of it. But here I see more downside on the weekly timeframe. Weeklies are when there's going to be more extension of that trend. Our ideal buys are when we're coming up out of the bottom area on the weekly time frame and not coming down. This is a sell signal. And uh, when it crosses 80 to the downside. And so uh, that's what we want to be looking for. And uh, by the way, if you wanted to uh, find out more about these indicators here, look, we're not here to show things that you don't need. I'm here to give you tools that you can use to beat these markets and uh, win bigger. So at CryptoMastery.org, these are these indicators. You can get them for $97 a month. Or if you sign up uh, for you can get a month free if you go there and uh, sign up here uh, today and uh, do the quarterly, I think it is, or six months. But <clears throat> this is the backbone of our success here in learning how to use these. It's, part, it's a big part of it. So here, here's a quick example. When these arrows align down here, it's very accurate. Market top, it called perfectly. Market bottom, it called perfectly here and here. And so you can read more about these at the CryptoMastery.org site. There are seven indicators that really are super simple to use and extremely powerful. You don't need all these fancy Fibonacci spirals and Elliott waves and all that nonsense. You really don't. Okay. So we teach uh, simpler modes of uh, trading here. So getting back to the charts, um, this is a no-go zone for me. I don't think the bleeding is done. Uh, I'm not ready. You know, could we catch a bounce on the daily time frame? We could, and we may, but I think that'll be a dead cap bounce. We're below. See, the problem is we're below the 21 and 50 moving EMAs now. And uh, you guys have heard me use the analogy. This is like being underwater, under the ice. And uh, if you're ever under the ice, you want to make sure it's, you know, the th thin ice you can get back above. That's this 21-day EMA. This green, the 50-day EMA is like thick ice. You're drowning here. We're going to drown in here for a little while. Getting up above that thick ice is going to be tough. I think we bounce up and we'll find more resistance at 40 to 41k and i think we're down in this by the dip zone for another few weeks and uh, we'll be watching for a, another uh, bounce bounce out of here on the next kind of cycle and on the weekly time frame and uh, then from there we can kind of layer in other indicators like the signal when the signal goes green now i don't know what's behind these I, the programmer has created these uh, he's a 25 year trader and quant engineer and uh, he does a great job creating these. So when we see these go green, especially after extended declines, these are the times when the markets rally. So if I turn off the uh, ERI here, we're coming back here, nice little rally. When they when they align together though, and ideally on these longer time frames, they're so powerful. Uh, I know these charts are a little bit messy to look at, but those of you who are to use these know these are uh, worth their weight in. Uh, Bitcoin <laughs> there. So although Bitcoin doesn't weigh anything, but uh, here clearly we see actual charts. This was the market cycle top clearly showing us to get out. Red arrow, red arrow. And uh, on the input side, if you're new here, let's take a look at uh, when we want to use the uh, bullish side. So we had this here on the weekly time frame. We had the bullish arrow. We had the TSI going green. We had this signal going green. And then there's a fourth indicator down here which is our one of my favorites, the trend indicator, kind of like seeing Mario Brothers coming out of nowhere, grabbing the coins. When you see the key, it means there's a new trend forming. The bell is the buy signal. It's a longer term signal. And then we follow kind of the, like the Tom DeMarc sequence. So these are number sequenced. The first dollar sign is take some profits. The second, the bag of money is take most of your profits. Wait for a new signal on the bell. And uh, we can see that was a great little rally there. So when those align, that's these are great signals. So ERI, early reversal indicator, look at that. We have a bullish engulfing candle and a hammer. So if we go back to that trade success checklist, look, I know many of you guys know about it. I want to make sure you're actually using it. Okay, because when we start clicking these over, we've got, has a signal line turned from red to green? Yes. Is the trend indicator showing a bell? Yes. As the trend indicator have a green midline? So now we're at a success score of 5 out of 21. It should be in this trade. Okay, these are the clues. Is there a bullish engulfing candle? We just looked at one. Yes. Is the candle body at support? Another clue. Yes. So that was, let me just jump back over to that one here. So we had right in here, see, uh, bullish engulfing 
Let me open that up a bit. It is. It's uh, at support. It is. So what else can we add to that trade success checklist? But at this point, like, where to go? Here, <clears throat> we're at a 7 out of 21. That's a great score to be adding to the trade. And here's the nuance. When you get a three or four, I'll start buying in, building a position. And as we start adding more of these, I'm adding to the position. Professional traders don't go in and buy it once and sell it once. They're building position and then taking profits at different levels. That's a smart way to trade. Uh, not being an armchair quarterback, a cowboy and going all in. Is the price above the 21 and 50 day? On the other example, it was not. Is the price, let's see, I wonder if I can split screen this. Maybe that'd be a good idea. Uh, let's see. Well, let's try that. Maybe that'll be good. It would go side by side. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, let me know. But this is for your benefit. Hear me now. These are the clues and the secrets to succeeding in crypto. Not the only ones. Certainly, you can use your other indicators. And I, I, I recommend that. But adding these to your arsenal will make the biggest difference. And uh, yeah, Alex saying when the indicators line up, so will the profits. Uh, Alex is in our M3 program, which uh, includes the indicators and the more advanced classes. So, uh, and uh, is uh, in our coaching program. So um, he knows. Well, let's uh, let's go down the line here. So, is the price above twenty one and fifty? It's not, but we have a seven out of twenty one score here. So um, we're happy. Now I'm talking specifically about. So there's no there's no clarity down in this region. So let me move that over. So we don't confuse you guys, okay? So in this region specifically, yeah, maybe confusing for you guys. So what we have here, there, in this region, we move it over a little bit. So this region, the ERI triggered there. Then we had TSI green at above 20 there. And then the signal line with green, then the key and the bell. So we're building a position all the way through this, right? And we're getting it back above. Actually, we're getting back above the 21 and 50 day EMAs right in here, adding to the position. Is the price above support, a rising support trend line? It is right along here. So now you can see this was all spelled out for us and for you in dramatic fashion and very clear fashion, because once all of that lined, what happened? We got in here and how high did this push up? Pushed up, you know, 60, 70, 80% up to that golden pocket, right? So let's go back to our example. And then we'll go back and look at some charts and we can look at some coins that are lining up. It's mostly a red day today, you guys. So uh, we're not looking for buying anything right now. You don't want to be catching a falling knife. So this is a good time to review these uh, patterns and why they can be so valuable uh, for you. And actually, let me go full screen. Max, uh, no, that's not going to work. It's going to go full, full screen. All right. <clears throat> Price breaking above trend line resistance. So we, we didn't really have trend line resistance down in here. So we'll say no on that. Uh, sorry, I think it got bejiggered there. But we don't need to. We're at 8 out of 21. So we don't need any more signals to get long on this. Is the volatility index above the 20 line? So this is one of our other indicators. I won't put it on this chart because it's just going to make it a little bit more. Um, I, I do like it on the shorter term time frame charts, by the way. So uh, let's uh, let's see and look at it. Phantom coin. I don't want to get into right now. That's taken a nice drop, but I think it's close to a buy point. We'll look at that on the daily. Um, what I want to add to this is Bitcoin and get a uh, clean version up here for the indicator that I'm talking about, and that is the um, vol index. So volatility index oversold conditions. Okay, so when we have that, here's it is on the one hour. Let me just open this up here to show you guys. And basically, it's great on the shorter time frames. It does work on daily but just less often. So look down here um, on the volatility index, specifically we're looking for overbought and oversold conditions. When it's over in green, it's overbought. A drop from green to black is a sell signal. A coming out of the red zone, red to black is a buy signal. And sometimes it takes a few times, but let me just open this up because we are getting a buy signal on, on this right now. And uh, but let's take a look at what the charts, how it coincided beautifully. So right back in here, caught a little bounce right in here on the vol index once black caught a bounce rejected at the 50 day. So you want to be aware of the time frame you're trading. But down in here, seeing a nice little bounce, I would not be going long on here because it's below the one 
the 21 and 50 period moving average. But uh, you guys can see what that looks like. Let me put it on the four hour. Maybe that would be helpful too. Now, I love this uh, for swing trading on uh, getting in and out on the four hour time frame. And uh, get to see another question coming in. But basically, uh, let's take a look at this on the four hour chart. Uh, put it on there twice. But, um, you know, it didn't see a, any, many. The last bullish on the four hour was back around here. Let's see if we find a better example. This dip right in December of 2023 and uh, caught a nice push up. It's a confirming indicator. Uh, so we can uh, look at that. And I won't put it on the daily just because it's uh, pretty rare. Although, you know what? We can do that. Let's try that. These, because they're more rare, they can be more valuable on the uh, daily time frame. Okay, so I'm glad we did that. So back in here, again, it confirms. Uh, we use it in conjunction with the other indicators and the trade success checklist, right? So where did that go? Uh, over here. So basically... I'll come back to that. So we have the vol index back here coming out of oversold conditions. It, it, it coincided with these other ones beautifully. You know, the top four, we call them the four horsemen. We don't really, uh, if we have all five, it's the five kings. We just made that up. Uh, and so sometimes we, uh, we move those around a bit. But essentially, the more of these that align, the better. So here we had an ERI. We had a trend strength indicator go green. We had a signal. We had the key in the bell. And we had the volatility index dipping from black, uh, red to black. Five of those aligned, and from there, what did we have? Guys, do you like these signals? This was on the daily time frame, pushed up 60% in Bitcoin, 50%, uh, and um, then we started to get in overbought conditions. So it's all this, this tells you the landscape that we're in. So, you know, we are getting into oversold conditions here. My concern is the 21 day is crossing the 50 day exponential moving average. And until we start going green on these and not red, we're bearish. We're not in buy zone, okay? But with the example that we're talking about, I'll turn this back on. We're lining up the indicators, right? So let's go back to our example and uh, and show kind of what we were watching then or could have been. Yeah, we're armchair, armchair quarterbacking a bit, but we had the vol index. We didn't have it back in there. It didn't line up here. It didn't, but we don't need that. It happened over a little earlier. Uh, so is there a rocket forming? We have, a, this is another indicator that we created and noticed. Uh, this is a pattern I've noticed for over years. If you get a, um, a big kind of a hammer candle like that on an EMA with a wick down below, it looks like a rocket on a launch pad. If you guys ever lit off bottle rockets or when you're Boy Scouts lighting off the rockets there with the uh, electric key and it shoots up in the sky, well, this is a, an indicator that um, that uh, we have. See, I've got the radar here. I'll turn off in a minute. Uh, rocket on the launch pad, I won't get into, but oftentimes we'll notice this pattern. And uh, that's also a very good uh, signal that this is about to go higher. Let me see if I can pull that up easily. So there it is, rocket on the launch pad. It's uh, invite only. And uh, you can get access to these uh, in the Crypto Mastery Pro suite. We haven't released that yet. So basically, though, you see this candle. Let me get rid of the vol index so the charts are candled correctly, uh, colored correctly. But you see this right there. This was the rocket on the launch pad. Real candle body on this 21 EMA. The wick down below, it's like lighting the fuse and it shoots up in the sky, runs out of fuel, comes down. We had another one here. Light the fuse, shoots up in the sky, comes back to the ground. So, you know, in this kind of case uh you know we didn't have the rocket earlier when we were looking down here but these can be later in the cycle and those are some of our favorite indicators so those would get a check as well you know look you're not looking for all of these to align but the more of them align you can add to the position higher probability lower risk right remember we talked about hedge fund traders are really risk managers are there green buy blocks? This is the new version of the ERI. This is the ERI Pro, not yet available, will be soon. But uh, these signify big buy buying blocks. So back to our example, you guys, ERI was green. This is back in October when we were buying in our retire rich class. And we had 100, 200% winners because we saw these indicators align. So we had the ERI, we had the TSI go green. We had the signal, we had the bell and... Um, um, we had a buy block right in here. 
So we saw a lot of buying pressure coming in, showing a lot of money, big money coming in. Maybe this was BlackRock getting ahead of the ETF. We don't know. These are great signals on the upside and the downside. So we could check that off if we see the buy blocks. Okay, are you guys getting this? Again, the more of these you check, our score is now of 10 of 21, should definitely be in this trade. Uh, you know, not financial advice. This is educational purposes only. Uh, and by the way, um, these work best on the higher volume coins. These are not going to have enough data on a pump and dump. So please don't go and use these to try and time these uh, ICOs, IDOs, low volume coins. You want to stick with the more established coins, high volume, Bitcoin, Ethereum, tier ones, Solana, Chainlink, Compound, you know, Polygon, Helium, you know, et cetera. <clears throat> Not uh, not your your really thinly floated uh, coins, okay? In general, so um, the other thing too, um, this uh, this is another bullish signal here that you guys can use without our signals. If it touches and goes below the lower Bollinger band, we use a modified Bollinger band. If you want the details for how to uh, modify a Bollinger band for crypto, uh, let me know in the chat, and uh, I'll reveal that. We we typically share that with our um and our M3 active trader. I'm happy to share with you guys if anyone wants it, okay? So um, there's other things here. The three inside up is just a pattern. This green one is one of our indicators called the radar. And uh, when these all align, these are multi time frames. We designed this to let you know when it's safe to be in the markets or out of the markets. And right now, because I have a little bit longer time frame, I'm gonna modify my radar times to go a little bit farther out. You can do four hour daily, weekly, monthly. I'm gonna modify this to daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, because I want a little bit longer view of what's what this market looks like. And if it's all green, green is go. If it's all red uh, is no go. So we have, uh, let's see, mostly red on this radar. These are based on a modified stochastic that we don't really need as an oscillator, but it allows us to see where the markets are heading in multiple time frames. So we're still bearish on this. These are all red. So what we can do in this case is if it was all green, we'd give it a check, which would add to the, the score, but we're gonna give it a mostly red. It's not, it's not all red, but if we do that, it's gonna take a point off of our score. So now we're back to nine. Good barometer on how to trade these markets. Um, the average true range is another one that we have. I know it seems like this is overkill, but they all have their place. All right, and uh, let me show you the ATR. There it is. It's a dynamic trailing stop, essentially. And uh, this can be used for... Okay, so this is good. We looked at this. Because as of back here on our trade, it would be, it would have been good. We had gone into entry mode a little bit earlier. Okay, where we are now, though, is we've just flipped exit. So this would have been if you were long Bitcoin, this would have yesterday been your exit signal to get out and cover the short. You know, you can also use this for entries, but it's a dynamic trailing stop. We should be out unless you're playing and you're hodling perfectly fine. But this is a sell signal. And uh, so at this point, you know, we would uh, not show it as an entry point. Um, and I'd let somebody else in here. Uh, at this point, it would not be an entry point. It would be an exit point. So we would check one on the bearish side. Okay. So, you know, you can use these. If there's conflicting signals, you can use these to give yourself a little better idea uh, of where to, where things are. Okay. So with that, the ATR uh, would be bearish. Uh, I'm not sure where I put that in here. But you guys, I don't want to confuse you with too much in here. But at any rate, um, what else do we see? So right now, we're Bitcoin still as bearish comes down, like we've been saying, into those other ranges. And those are those indicators. Again, you can find out more at uh, cryptomastery.org. Uh, we've got a special on for three more days where you can get a month free. If you're in our M3 Active Trader, you always have access to this. And uh, But these are the uh, tools we use to time these markets and um, essentially win. Lots of reviews, uh, many more that we haven't put on the page, but you can go read more about that. Uh, there in this course is teaching you how to use them. So any any questions on how to use those indicators? And we can uh, dive into some more charts here. But uh, again, you know, this um, this is uh, currently if here's a nuance everyone should know. If you see a bullish ERI, OK, this is an early reversal indicator. 
but only if it needs the confirmation. It needs the confirmation from the TSI to also go green and be above that 20 line. So here we see that it was trying to, but it didn't turn green and it rejected here. So that would have de uh, invalidated this bullish ERI. That's the key. These have to be in alignment. Uh, up here, we had bearish. It kind of went bearish. We dipped down. We got the rocket pushed back up. You know, when these are in alignment, we great things can happen. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's see. Uh, okay, question is, if I'm still 50% invested in the market, okay, good. Uh, what does the indicator tend to say is better? Selling completely now or buy the dip or holding 50% now and buying the remaining fit? Let's see. Yeah, it sounds like the same question there. Sell, okay, I'm sorry. Sell. The question is, if you're 50% in the market, meaning you've gotten out part of your position and should you sell completely and buy more of the dip or hold 50% that you're holding and buy the remaining 50%. That, that is a, the question of the day. So um, let's unpack that a bit. And of course I cannot give individual financial advice. So let's just take a look at the chart and um, I'll tell you what I see and kind of what, where my, what I'd be thinking. And uh, you know, the short answer is if you're ever uncomfortable you sell half of what you have. And so in the past, you know, I would go 50% out. And then if it's weakening further, I'd sell half of that. And if it just really looks like it's going to drop more, um, I might sell the remaining part of it. The problem with that is if you get completely out and there's a spike and a rally and the buyers really come back in, then you're chasing and you've doubled your your loss actually by by kind of chasing it. Not not doubled the loss exactly, but do you get what I mean? If you sell kind of at all out and then you get a bounce, the opportunity cost is of catching some of that bounce, even if you're taking profits into that bounce. So my short answer is for your specific situation, um, let me rephrase that. Uh, in general, if, if you were 50% in the market, had taken some, some profits or stop losses, and uh, we're holding 50%. Selling another half, if you believe we go lower, would be my how I would play it. Okay. So, so looking at this again, where we are, I think that um, it's a good question because I think we bounce from 38K. I wouldn't be buying just yet. But if you sell here and maybe it sort of goes sideways for a few days or weeks, and then you get a big candle up from the ETFs finally saying, hey, we're in. That's the danger. So um, if we start losing 38K, then we likely go to 32K. So I, uh, I'd probably sit tight or, you know, you could sell a little bit more of that. The thing is, as Bitcoin comes down, the alts will come down farther and harder. So I think you need to weigh that. If you are in Bitcoin, that's one thing. If you're in the altcoins, uh, you know, I think with looking back three months from now, it won't be a big issue. But I understand the question. And either way, we want to ideally be buying low, buying the dip. Let me see if I have another uh, chart here that shows this. But um, yeah, I mean, this this is a chart I've had up for weeks as well. The The bearish divergence was clearly there on the RSI. I'll get back to the question in a minute, but we saw this on the uh, stochastic ROI coming down before the price started coming down. And we saw it also on this, uh, our regular RSI. We saw it on the, the MACD was a little bit later. It's sort of following the price, right? Those tend to mirror, but, but, but these tell us that this is going lower and uh, on a weekly time frame, that's the concern. And we have this crossover on the MACD about to happen. So, that's why I would exercise some caution here. And there's two things that are likely to happen is that we get a bit of a bounce and relief rally. This is where we get back to the market makers and the AIs that drive this because they know that the the masses are usually wrong. What's going to happen if they get down to 38K or let's say we break 38K intraday. We see a wick. You see these wicks down here? The market makers likely will do that because they know a lot of people have their stop losses there. And a lot of people, the leverage day traders and degenerates are going to leverage short the market. 
and that's liquidity for the market makers. And if you're not familiar with that term, that means that's where they can scoop up a lot of Bitcoin because if people aren't selling it, they can't have their inventory to sell. And they know, they being the market makers, which as we know are now programs and robots and uh, let's just call it the market makers, but we understand what that means. So they know there's, um, you know, there's probably some human interaction where it's like skew bullish because ETFs coming money. That's probably something the AIs can't factor in. I say probably because these things are getting so advanced, uh, and and uh, and we're I'm using AI technology for creating marketing videos and and copywriting. It's amazing stuff, but a little scary if it's if it's your adversary. So what likely is going to happen is they'll drop it. There'll be some kind of news. It'll um, uh, it'll come down, and what people will panic sell on the one hand, stop losses and liquidations will happen, as well as people going short. And then if they run it back up at the end of the day and maybe bullish, to then liquidate the shorts and get everyone to go leverage long, and they might push it up for a day or two. But really what we want to be watching, and, and mark my words, this is likely going to play out. This isn't conjecture. We've seen this over and over again. You have to think like a market maker. So what we want to watch for is a bounce in a lower high. If we see a lower high and we see a red candle with a wick up here and then it closes below that, watch out below. And it's not a good thing, a bad thing. It's just a thing. This is how the markets work. You need the yin and the yang. You need... The bulls and the bears, the tug of war needs both sides or else there's no market. There's no game. Okay. <clears throat> so don't panic, but just be aware in your situation uh, at this point, I would probably sit out and wait and see and see if we start losing on this bounce right here, using Bitcoin as the North Star for all of it. Because if I said to you sell half here and then or on a break below 38 and you do a market sell, get filled down here and then boom, we push higher, you're not going to be too happy with me. The more likely scenario is and uh, I'm going to redraw scenario B. OK, so we have this is scenario A, dip push up, pull back, and go higher, that could happen. And that's another reason I wouldn't want you to sell more right now. If suddenly we start cranking up on this, you'll be mad at me if you're out. I think you're in a good place, 50% allocated. You know, you don't want to miss the move, but more than likely that'll be Bitcoin only initially. Okay. So scenario one is that, but this is what makes, makes trading hard. Like we don't, we can't predict the future. So um, the scenario B, let me see how I want to draw this. I'll just piggyback off that one would be here. Uh, I'm going to go higher a little earlier, fake out, you know, and then we're back into 35 range. But 32 would be great. Uh, not because I want anyone to lose money. But I would suggest if we start losing these levels, getting more into cash, taking small losses because, and I know it's hard emotionally, but because to have money and, and black powder, have powder dry here specifically will make up for a lot of these losses if you can nail the bottom. And it's the dollar cost average strategy, right? So... So these, this is why we'll be watching our indicators, which are currently bearish and indicate we, we should head lower. Let me hide this one. But the most one I'm watching right now, we're losing the 80 on the TSI. These are very, uh, you know, even when they bounce in the middle, once we break 80. So we want to watch what happens here going into the end of the week, reminding ourselves it's the end of the week, the end of the period. If you're on a daily, let the daily close dictate. So, so this could still bounce out of here. OK, and uh, that's why it's a little bit tricky to uh, to call this one. I'm just going on experience, but uh, and thinking like a market maker, you know, they want to fool as many people as they can. So more than likely, I am 70 30 that we bounce here, fake out all the traders to go long and then they dump it down to 35 short covering. 
longs dive in again, they fool them, and then the shorts dive back in and they crush it down to 32K. And then we go off like, then we just go straight up because they don't want to give everyone time to get back in. They want it all for themselves. I reserve the right to be wrong. That's my read. We're going to unpack that a little bit deeper uh, tomorrow. And uh, by the way, if you'd like to know more about uh, that class, for those of you that are more advanced, that's just at moonstream.io, if I could spell this correctly, uh, dot uh, m moonstream, I forgot a T. You know what? Here's what you can do. Go to our main website, moonstream.io. I got too many things open here, right here. And uh, this class right here, the M3 Active Trader, that is my more advanced for active traders, swing traders, and uh, you guys get the indicators for free. Uh, go learn about that if you're not already in. A number of you are here. They're here live. If you're watching the replay, uh, go to moonstream.io slash M3. You can read all about it. Uh, access to me 24-7 in this signal chat. We're dropping a lot of alpha in there. Uh, also in the weekly webinar on Wednesdays. That's for you guys. Membership area with other video training and other tools that we use. A dollar cost averaging template you can use. Portfolio trackers to keep track of your gains and losses. And uh, some other cool stuff you can read about there. Cheat sheets, high probability candle patterns, and uh, other tools that I've created that I've used in the past. High probability trading patterns as well as candlestick patterns. You know, to really give you an edge. Uh, here's me in front of my uh, war station. I've got I've got a new wall here. I've got a new vertical monitor, two of them, and a Mac, new MacBook because uh, um, <clears throat> apparently I need all that. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, go find out more about that. It's our highest level training for swing traders and active traders. Uh, just to be thorough, if you're more of a hodler, then you might want to know about our retire rich class. It's something for everybody, you guys. So uh, whatever level you're at, you can... Sign up for our newsletter here. That's or month, once a month, one pick a month. The indicators learn about here. The M3 Active Trader, we're doing a lot of what I'm teaching you today, but in more detail, looking at macro markets and uh, monthly charts and the dollar dollar index, et cetera. Retire Rich, which the hat is, uh, is, is for, is more of a longer term emerging markets. The next Netflix, Amazon's getting in gem coins, buy and hold, buy and hold. Those two are complimentary, just so we're clear. Um, you know, we are here to help you and give you, but uh, there are different styles of trading. That's why we're doing all of these. Okay, so uh, any questions, let me know. I do see some more questions coming in. And, uh, you know, this, let's see, 10 minutes news, uh, Bitcoin, GBTC bleeds as Bitcoin price hits 38K. Did we just hit 38K? The news just said it did. Uh, not on Coinbase. We've got to 38.5. You know, everyone else is out there is panicking. I've been saying 38K for weeks, if not months. Anyway, not to pat myself on the back, but that's why you guys call me Crypto Damas, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, I'm going to screenshot this and then answer some more questions. And uh, But here's that chart. This is the chart of the day. And um, new information equals new decisions. The probabilities favor this scenario playing out. Okay, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Perry. Thanks for, for your question, by the way. Uh, Alex says, you can always lighten the position a little more, but I personally wouldn't be completely out. Yeah, Alex, well-trained. You can tell you had a good teacher, Alex. Uh, Alex is in our coaching program. These markets will shoot back up when you sleep. Yeah, see, that's the thing. These AIs, they want you to sell and panic sell. And um, so they can buy cheaper and, um, you know, they... They're machines, guys. It's we're no longer. It's it's Terminator is here, and they're here to terminate your uh, your. Uh, I have to laugh because we have a member in M three named Terminator, so I'm not referring to uh, to him, but uh, referring to the Arnold Schwarzenegger version. They're here to terminate your account, um, and it's not as nefarious as it seems. Again, back to that headline of the the computer algo creation company, they spin it. It's kind of funny how they spin it to deliver outsized gains for your institution. Well, this is a zero sum game, everybody. That means to take more money from you guys. This is not a fair market um, in the sense that everyone wins and everyone does not win. Those with the more better, with the better information, better tools win. 
And essentially what we are doing, if anyone wants to know what the ERI is, it's following the footsteps of the institutions. We're, we're following those guys. Kind of like uh, Dr. J, John Najeri, an old friend of mine, used to uh, use an options volume scanner to see where the uh, insiders were placing their bets. Big option plays right into the close of Wall Street. Uh, John and I joke about it because I, I was developing one also with a friend around the same time. So look, uh, these bigger players, they cheat. And if you can see how how they're doing it. Now, let us let's let me back that up a bit. Let me just say, I'm not saying anyone's cheating, but the clues are there. So bear with me for a moment, because this is this is fun to understand why the ERI works so well. So specifically, that green arrow right there is, is what we show you guys. But the the actual indicator is this one below it. And I'm going to open that up for you. So how many of you want to look at that all day? Right. It's hard to determine what that is. I'll tell you what it is. Basically, the pattern that I noticed, this was an accidental discovery. Many of you know the story. This was an accidental discovery because uh, we were going to deprecate this oscillator. And then when then I said to the programmer, I said, hey, wait a minute. When when this goes below three or hits zero, this oscillation line and back above 20. Within three time periods, it very often continues all the way up. OK, and similarly, on the downside, when it goes up to 100 or 90 percent plus or 97 percent plus and then back below 80 within three time periods, it usually continues all the way down. So those are those red lines. So the green lines are the green arrows. The red lines are the red arrows. The reason the oscillator in the middle changes color as we've layered in another oscillator, some proprietary quant work that Joe, uh, to give credit, Joe, the uh, genius programmer has created. Uh, it, it, but I said, Joe, nobody wants to look at this. We need, can we just put arrows on the chart? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, these are the same, but, but we, we love it as our early signal, early reversal indicator. So it tells us, hey, this might be a good time to get in. The confirmation is the TSI. So sometimes it takes a couple of days. And in this case, this would have been the confirmation because we had a bullish engulfing candle and we're starting to break 20 right in here. OK, so, you know, we're 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 working on combining these into a single super indicator that can tra deliver trade signals, automations, but uh, it's a little bit tricky. OK, so let's just uh, keep going um, a little behind on the questions. Uh, Perry says, personally, I'm in the bigger alts. OK, I mean, these are going to largely follow and programmatic buying for the tier ones. If you say larger alts, probably like chain link compound. You know, I am starting to look at these uh, other pairs, though. Interesting that Sol ETH is on the rise. All right. Here's a trade opportunity for you guys. Let me let me hold, wait, hold that thought. Uh, all red on the radar on the weekly. Don't like that not a buy but there's buying coming in here we have a buy block this is Saul ETH so people are lining up think, saying Saul is the new Ethereum but we're not this is not a well, let's go back to our trade checklist all red on the radar negative so so we can use these trade checklists also on the negative side where did that thing go did I close it here, here, I got too many windows open. Uh, let me close some of these things. I think I closed it. So I'll download it again. And uh, we can, um, yeah, so I can use it on the bearish side as well. I think it's in another window. That's what I did. Okay, never mind. It's, uh, I know, hang on, it's right here. So, um, so let's, if I can clear this, that's the problem. I, I don't have an easy way to clear this unless I can reload it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so on the bearish side, we just come down here and say, all right, well, do we want to be bullish on this? Well, it's red on the radar, negative one, right? So so off, so far, we're off to a bad a bad start on this trade. Where do we go? Saw, on Salt ETH is what I'm referring to. Uh, let me open it up for you guys uh, a little bit. So um, all red on the radar, no good, but... What do we have on the positive side? This is where it's, it's interesting that we have Sol ETH getting a green ERI. Curious. But now we have we have nothing. Zero, zero trade score, right? One negates the other. 
would not be buying this based on that. Do we have a TSI? No, nothing there. Signal's red, trend is red. Don't really have anything bullish uh, on this to go by. We're below the EMAs. Uh, we're below, it's, it's a more of a bearish trade. So I got a little bit excited there. I saw some green overhead resistance. Uh, back to the bearish scenario. What do we have? Is there, is price above long term? So this is the bullish scenario, bearish trades. Okay. Uh, is there overhead resistance? There's another one. Now we're at, now we're back to negative one. So we're skewed bearish on this trade. Um, these down below just mean there's no trend. I, we could say the signal line is red, but uh, this just says, no, there's not enough to go on. You know, I only do a trade if it's plus two or plus three on the plus side. Do you guys see how you can use this? Uh, do you guys see how you can use this? So, and uh, let's see, um, just continue the questions here. Um, Mitt's, uh, some, Mitt's saying a link to our course. Yeah, you can find out everything we do at moonstream.io. I really don't want to make this a commercial here, right? We really are here to help you guys. Uh, please go and read just some of the feedback from traders. I've been in financial education for 20 years now. I founded the Options University in 2020, uh, 2020, 20, 2004, can't even say that anymore. 2004, I founded that. Uh, we grew it to an Inc. 500 uh, company and taught tens of thousands of investors how to trade options and Forex live seminars. I used to hold the Investor Super Conference in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I just found the old sales letter. I well, we had uh, some of my friends were speakers, John Nigerian, Steve Nissan, Jake Bernstein, uh, who's who of... Um, educators and um, did that for many years. And so, um, uh, but now I'm in the expert on crypto. And so uh, we are getting the best reviews of anything I've ever uh, put out to the public. Please go and read these. If you're an active trader, check out M3 Active Trader. And if you just want the signals, go to cryptomastery.org and just read some of the feedback. This is by far not all of them. Just didn't want to see. We've got pages and pages of them. Happy to supply more if you'd like some more feedback. But everything is guaranteed. Uh, you know, I would say uh, try it out. Uh, this uh, very happy program and read some of the reviews. So uh, you have that. Um, the newsletter is a month once a month. My amazing business partner Mike puts out a we do a newsletter with a monthly coin pick. He's had some phenomenal results in the. You know, I can't can't laud or give uh, income claims. Uh, but Phantom Coin went up 18,500% in 2021 after we recommended it. Not all of them, but Solana went up 600%, recommended Helium in July of 2021. Some great projects we have really early uh, alpha on. And um, so anyway, uh, go check that out. That was a question. Thank you for your question. And uh, do some private coaching and mentoring, a very limited time. Um, but uh, happy to, if you want to book a call with me directly, you can do that there as well. Our Retire Rich Inner Circle meets Thursdays. You get a free hat. And uh, we talk about emerging markets, coins that are early in industries such as up and coming industries like metaverse, NFTs, uh, AI, the combination of those, what the future looks like, and a lot of other areas uh, that we don't have time to talk about like D-PIN and um uh, things like helium, which peer to peer real use case scenarios and uh, AI. So all that you can read more about that here. This is just a, a real simple Google doc with our investment thesis. So, all right. Thank you for, uh, anyway, I'll get, the, I'll get to put that away here. Oh, and by the way, yeah, for the, this Thursday, again, I'm going to dive deeper into some of these uh, strategies that we use uh, live market update coins to watch. I'm going to share some of the coins we're watching and look over my shoulder analysis uh, like we're doing now with some macro charts and also knowing when to buy the dip for Bitcoin. We touched upon that here today. Uh, you can sign up for that at moonstream.io slash free training. So I'll drop that in the chat here and there you go okay so let's get back to business here for you guys and let's see any questions here i'm i'll stay as long as you want 130 we've gone almost 90 minutes uh let's see perry says thanks for sharing your viewpoints you're welcome uh, and yeah not financial advice but um exactly i i just have to i can give group advice there are legal exclusions i just can't tell you what to do specifically like so if, if you ask me should you buy dogecoin uh, I can't give you any uh, indication 
So I'm just kidding. Um, nothing against Doge other than they have no useful utility. And most of it, you never know of these things. Um, uh, if Elon makes it the payment rails for, for uh, I want to say Tesla, because I can't, Twitter X, keeps changing the names on these things. Um, you, you never know. But I think more than likely, X because X.com originally, if you guys might not know this, or was Elon's original payments company before PayPal. It was called X.com. Apparently, he kept the domain. Um, he merged with Peter Thiel to form PayPal. Um, Peter Thiel was the founder of PayPal and X.com. They merged. Uh, I'm listening to uh, Peter Thiel's audiobook, Zero to One. Excellent, by the way. Uh, he talks about they realized they needed to merge and neither would survive. And um, but uh, he's applied for something that indicates he's getting back into financial payments. So um, I don't think it will be Dogecoin that are may uh, he may float a rumor, um, but who knows? Anyway, let's not let's not talk about Dogecoin though. Otherwise, uh, anyway, it, it really doesn't have much utility. So uh, let's see. Do you think there's any special importance to the? Three day chart. I usually don't look at a three day. Sometimes I'll look at a two day. Um, so let me just have a look at that and uh, we can uh, see what that tells us. I don't even have three day uh, set up, so I'll have to do that. Let me see why is that. Some crypto influencers seem to like it for the crystal ball <laughs> reasons. Oh, well. Um, you just have to laugh sometimes. I look a two day. There is no crystal ball. I mean, I would say our indicators give us a good crystal ball. Uh, not 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 to spread hype at all, you guys. It's just uh, you know, what do I see here? A two day can smooth out some of the noise. A um, but but uh, it makes the indicators less reliable. You want to see another reason why I think 32K, by the way, I'll share this with you because it's uh, some alpha since you guys staring on around. I'm going to move that out of the way. Uh, old day trading, it's not really a trick. When you see these big alpha, these big vector candles here where the markets move a lot, very often it comes back to retest the midline of those. And there's various reasons for that. Okay. Well, we haven't retested this midline of this vector candle and uh, wouldn't you know it is also very strong resistance level resistance and if you go all the way out let me turn off the eri here i'm not trying to get too technical you guys i want to keep it simple but visually look at that 32k level it uh was it blew through it back in 2021 pull back as support but pushed up pounced back as support pushed up Failed as support, became resistance, dropped down, down, became resistance here once and twice. So this is a weekly time frame. It, it touched it a number more times, but but it has not retested. The 32K level should retest. Let's put a Fibonacci on that and just see because these things, I have this damn toolbar. If anyone knows how to turn the toolbar off, please enlighten me. Uh, because there, it's, that goes away for a minute and then it comes back. Uh, let's go in here and do a Fibonacci on this. So, you know, um, it doesn't align with anything. The other areas of interest, the 50% would take us down to 37K. We come down to 34.5, you know, but uh, that 32K level, you know, we'll have to see. My answer is I'll wait till our, our indicators start to turn green and line up. That's how confident I am in them. I'm not saying that to sell those to you guys. I want you to have them. It will improve your trading. They're the best I've used in 20 years, and I'm not saying that because we built them. Um, I created the ERI. Uh, I created the Rocket. This is I have my 10,000 hours in, you guys, for sure. And I stare at charts all day, every day. I'm not saying I'm better than everyone else. Just saying there's certain things that you see over and over again, and... Um, play out and the indicators really have given given me an edge and our, our traders not to say they're perfect you know we have to layer in a probability so with the three-day question i don't see any um real alpha here uh i you know i want to be careful not to dismiss it but i mean there's once these get below the 21 and 50 period emas you don't need a two-day uh you can see that on the daily 
I mean, you don't need a three day. You can see it on the daily or the two day or the weekly. You know, my friend Scott Phillips says he's like, we're, we're basically as humans, slightly evolved monkeys looking for patterns everywhere. And I'm not calling anybody a monkey, uh, whoever's saying that. I'm just saying I've never used a three day. I don't see anything offhand that gives me any. Uh... Anyway, let me know if there's any particular indicator. I, I don't I'm, I'm open minded and I try not to have confirmation bias, but uh, I don't see any uh, anything offhand that gives me um, any reason to uh, watch that. All right. We're trying to terminate the AI Terminator. Yes. <laughs> Perry says idea. Hey, if uh, what if. What if you made the green ERI arrows hollow when the bottom oscillator is not also good? Okay, interesting. So you're mean the TSI and solid green arrow in the bottom. Yeah, that's a good, it's an interesting idea, Perry. Um, we were toying with that exact sort of what, how do we want to designate this? And um, the, the other idea, though, was to just not have the arrow show up at all. Because what I want to do is eliminate a lot of the noise in the middle, right? So on a weekly time frame, it clears up a lot of that noise, okay? But not all of it. You know, this this barely dipped. These were good bearish signals. So what I would rather do is just have them, you know, you can see that the lighter ones are less ideal. I won't go into a rabbit hole here. But under the settings... Uh, we have stochastics bear, stochastics bear with a Keltner channel. Um, we have now the lighter ones are less ideal. And uh, I won't go into what that means necessarily. Uh, you can go down a rabbit hole there and you can't, well, you can touch it on, tweak it in the settings. Do you want to hear this? I don't want to, this is over most people's head, but the the better, the darker candles are going to essentially um, be uh, on the, the the red candles are going to be above 97. A pullback from 97 to below 20 is going to give the higher these darker candles. If it uh, if it's if it goes above 90 below 80, and these thresholds are adjustable, I wouldn't change them by the way. But if you wanted to say that change this to 95, I don't know. Or if you wanted to say, um, you could maybe turn those off even. But um, for the less ideal candles, but that doesn't make them uh, less important. It's more that TSI. But the point being, that's the difference between these. On the low touch point, the low, it's if it's below three and above 20, you get the dark green candle. If it's below 10 and then goes below 20, these aren't labeled very well. There's a help bar that uh, it doesn't tell you much of anything. So maybe we need to work on that. But we really don't want you playing around in this. And then the three is within three time periods. Now I've told you how to build this. It's not that easy. There's also some other stuff in there. but uh, And then there's the small arrows. Uh, we could turn those on, but I don't like to have those on because there, there are these little ones in here and, uh, and, and they don't mean as much. So we'll probably deprecate that. But what if we just had the arrows not show up? Hollow is a, is a good idea, but it might just contribute to the... Because why have it there? I don't. I rather not see them if they don't confirm with the TSI. That's how strongly I feel about those two together. But um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I, I need to find uh, a programmer to do it. Joe's Joe's super busy uh, doing some super advanced stuff, uh, trading auto trading futures. Um, and we're we are looking to build an auto trader algo for crypto. It's just it's just a, it's complicated. We'll and uh, we'll let you know. Um, would you guys be interested in trade signals, by the way? We used to have those on Telegram, and I was talking to Joe about uh, re-releasing those. Uh, they're not auto-trading. You'd have to make the call, but they would go out automatically. Okay, well, you guys, once you see here, uh, still here, welcome. Glad you're uh, still with us. I think we're going to wrap things up, 90-minute class, and I think we covered a lot of ground. So, again, uh, please do join us on Thursday at moonstream.io slash free training. And uh, we're going to show you some stuff. We're going to teach you some stuff. Uh, in full disclosure, I'm going to be offering and telling people about my M3 Active Trader. So, you know, it's edutainment. There is a, uh, a uh, encouragement to join this. We now have monthly pricing. But look, um, 
ninety percent of people in here, if not ninety five percent, continue and and continue on, and very few leave. The renewal rate is very high, and uh, with M three Active Trader, you get those indicators for, for you get those included uh, for as long as you're a member. And uh, and then uh, here's some of our uh, retire rich people with their hats on. Anybody here from the hat group? No, not yet. I want to get some more hats. We got lots of hats left. So anyway, um, that's what we'll be talking about tomorrow. But I'll be teaching. There'll be a value. And um, I'm going to put out a video ahead of time just so I don't have to talk about my background. So it's not so salesy. I know you guys hate that. But we do that. So in case you don't, you've never heard of me before. Uh, it, I'm not just another one of these pseudonymous crypto and an analysts uh, that uh, came out of nowhere to uh, teach you guys. So that's part of the, uh, you know, establishing some status alignment and credibility with you. But anyway, with that in mind, let me see if there's anything I wanted to uh, look. Well, we didn't look. You know what? I forgot. I apologize. Usually you look at the top gainers, see if we see anything moving. Um, you know, we look at a minimum 100 million in um, volume and uh, market cap. Some of these are pretty small here. Uh, Titan, I won't look at. Multi-chain, uh, what do they do? Are there an interop? I like Web3. You guys want to stick around a little bit? Uh, let's see. Perry says, talking about uh, hut and pump, pump and dumps. Okay. Yeah, we can we can look at that. Uh, yeah, I like I like audience participation, so don't be shy. See a bunch of you here. And, and again, if you're watching the replay on uh, YouTube, uh, we do uh, we do these every Tuesday, and uh, you can sign up for free if you want to be able to ask questions. Uh, at some point, I, I want to live stream this on YouTube's. But uh, if you want to be on the live stream for now, you can go to the moonstream.io.com. Sorry, moonstream.io at the bottom and uh, sign up for those classes uh, and, and be on there with us. But uh, please like, at least like and subscribe. You know, that would be uh, very helpful to uh, growing the audience. All right. So um, this this is this is too new. We're not looking at this. Well, this is a weekly time frame, but that's a pump. That's going to come back to earth. So nothing to see there on multi-chain. But every now and then we find a gem. I, I did neglect to bring up our watch list. And we had some from last week that we could uh, look at here. We had uh, in the weeks past, MOVR rejecting at the 21 month. How did we get on a monthly chart? Uh, oh, well, I think I know why. Let me come back to that. So is anybody not from... I don't, I feel like I've over talked this to death on the monthly chart. I'll just leave with this and we'll put the indicators away on the monthly chart. The green arrow is only fired four times and uh, always at the uh, bottom of the. Let's see, I'm on Ethereum, which is pretty good here, but I <clears throat> just need to finish this thought. I believe it's this chart. So basically uh, the ERI is only fired four times in the history of Bitcoin. Um, this is some. This is some reverse engineering. We didn't have it back then, but if we look back, it triggered here at the bottom of the 12, 2012 market, shot up, triggered here in the depths at the bottom of the April 15 market, uh, not ex exact bottom because we had some scam wicks, to be fair, but it also triggered here in 2019, shot up, and it nailed the entry. We were watching this. If you guys are new to, to Moonstream, I was telling people we were we were getting in this market based on this monthly candle, saying, guys, we are good. We have bullish engulfing. We have the ERI <clears throat> and a TSI uh, going green down below. It's not much harder than that. Okay, so again, you can get those at CryptoMastery.org. Enough about that. So um, um, I want to go to the daily chart. Oh, I see what happened. We're on the top gainers, and it opened it up as a monthly chart. Um, oh, here's here's my cycle chart. Do you guys want to see this? This is usually uh, for tomorrow, but since you guys are still here, uh, we talked about some things, the MACD rolling over, the uh, bearish divergences on the stochastics and stochastics RSI. But look at this. This is a halving indicator. There's a number of them on this. This is a number of these. But so basically the halving goes here. This is the 2016. And the run-up happens after the halving traditionally. We're going to talk about this more tomorrow on the left skewed parabola. But we see in, in halvings of past, the halving happens and then the profit starts getting stronger, stronger, stronger until the top. And then profit ends and it goes into the, the bear market. <clears throat> Next time we have the third halving, sideways, sideways, sideways. After the halving, profits, prices go up. 
Go up, go up, profit taking, profit taking, profit taking, profit ending. All right. So what are we seeing now? We have the DCA. We're starting. We're not into the having yet. So let me turn one of these off so we can see it. I'm gonna get rid of this doohickey again. I'll put it at the top this time. Um, so basically, uh here, not that one, the rainbow. I'll leave on the countdown there. So basically, what we see is the having is supposed to happen in here. So this would indicate we go sideways, sideways, sideways. Okay. And then it goes up. So the parabola they would suggest or what these indicators would suggest we would see sort of like this kind of parabola again. Many, uh, so that's consensus. I, I don't think so. Uh, I think, uh, and we cover this in tomorrow's class, the 10 reasons that could ignite this market faster 10 smoldering campfires that if any one of them flames up could ignite all of it like a California forest fire. I think that is going to create a left skewed parabola where we start heading higher sooner. And uh, March, April. And uh, we're seeing this ending. This puts us coming down December of 2025, which, which, is, which is what a lot of people say anyway. But I think, um, I think we see a left skewed parabola Okay, look up Bob Lucas on Twitter. He uh, he's uh, also of that mindset. Okay, we'll talk about that more tomorrow. Um. Okay, and then this chart again showing come down, dip into thirty five k, thirty two thirty five k area, and then we go higher. All right, so back to the top movers, and then we're gonna wrap things up. Just to see if we find any. I'll go back to the crypto mastery list from last week. See if we any of these other ones are still going higher on our hot movers. Uh, let's see. Oh, that uh, isn't what I want to do. I need to get to a chart. Sorry, guys. This trading view is amazing. It has so many different places to click and utilize uh, information. I don't. Let me see if we know any of these. Typically, ones I've heard of are ones we want to look at. Well, look at Sui. So, if you guys don't have Sui, it's a smart contract platform, and uh, it has a whole. Um, it has a launch pad. It has a swap. So there's Sui swap. There's Sui pad. Uh, I am a owner of some Sui. And uh, and this is the one I'm going to hodl and hold for a while. We'll see what happens. It's super cheap. It's uh, right under a dollar. But here's an ERI forming. I, I will caution you, however, uh, this is an example of one not to rely on our indicators because uh, there's there's no volume to say here. It was very, is this even an option? The volume is negligible. This is on crypto.com. This exchange is very low volume. So the ERI, yes, is bullish. This almost looks like a rocket. I think this will push up to a dollar eighty, and um, you know, there's a little pump opportunity of fifty percent. I'll set an alert to basically sell some at that level. I'm gonna mostly hold it, though, and uh, you know, see what happens. But it's all red on the radar. I doubt there's any news here. Well, Sui overtakes Bitcoin. What? Aptos to become 13th largest DeFi network. Oh, in a DeFi sense. Yeah, Sui's in DeFi. DeFi, uh, I think we'll have, it's will be another winning narrative this year. Let's see, total value locked, slingshot Sui price to break dollar for, for all two night new highs. Okay, well, there you go. Um, and then, yeah, so we've heard about, so this is older news, 46 of, and that's older news. Uh, Sui, guys, you might want to keep it on your radar, SUI. We talk about that more tomorrow as well. So, uh, anywho, um, let's go right down the list on crypto uh, mastery. Now that I'm in the charts here, we were looking at rune, runes bleeding out, DYDX mm, heading down, all red on the radar. Look at this assemble protocol, right? It's right and up. I mean, I don't know. This looks uh, up and to the right to me. And we're getting a new bell on our trend indicator. These will run in sequences. See that? So key didn't get the bell. We had a key bell, take profit, bag of money. We're into a new sequence. So this is one to keep on the radar too. It's 0 0.07 cents, not not one I can give any financial, you know, buy recommendations. It's it's a hot mover though. And uh, some of these other ones have stopped being so. So I'll take them off. And then uh, we can look at some of these micro caps. Just, these are bleeding out and... Um, you know, uh, at some point they'll bounce, but looking pretty weak for the, the near term. All right, you guys, I don't see anything else in the top movers. 
worth uh, looking at. Uh, well, let's look at Sovereign. Hmm. Those of you who know, those of you in our re retire rich course, you've heard of Sovereign before. Hmm. Can't I can't release any information unless you're in our um, class. Now, what is the deal with this? It's uh, oh, I see why. Okay, I see why. So these um ignore all of these other things here but we would like to have our indicators on this uh at any rate uh at any rate nothing to see here so sovereign like i like i would like to know when sovereign breaks a dollar uh, if you'd like to know more about that um we talked about it in our retire rich class it has some interesting implications for the long term crossing up i'll put an alert on it okay anything else you guys want to look at all right so we'll have a, a vote for top gainers here but look don't be searching to buy anything. The best traders sit out on the sidelines during these types of markets. Uh, two more I do want to look at. Okay, three more. Here we go. So we've got Say. Uh, we have uh, Chili's. We have Blur. I think uh, Alex, Chili's is one of yours, isn't it? That you like to, um, that you follow and uh, have done well with. Using the indicators, I might add. Uh, yes, he says. So the problem with this chart, though, what do I need to do here? Um, yeah, so here it is. I need a, a chart that doesn't have those same indicators on it. And I think it's OK. I think I know what I need to do. I'm going to need to start on this. I hope this is uh, what I need to do. And then top gainers. And then I'll do blur and see why it's putting that as the super charts. And no, okay, so well, here's what we do on this. Okay, well, this is our inner work. Turn this lemon into lemonade. Uh, under templates, I'm gonna go in here and say, I want my template uh, for my daily default indicators. Boom, there we go. Now we have everything we need. Click of a button. So this is blur. Uh, which was on my radar earlier. We've got Chili's. Oh, there's another one there I saw. So we're going to look at a couple. All right, you guys are in luck. iExec RLC. Now they're in the cloud storage area like Filecoin, Storage, some others. So uh, they pushed higher earlier, but look at that, all green radar. So what I would do here is I would put an alert on $2.40 to see if that starts to break out because that would be a recent resistance level. But we have a buy block. We're all green. This looks really good, you guys. Uh, it, where is it available, though? RLC is... It's on Coinbase. Let's see if we have similar setups here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Rick had asked in the M3 group, should you use the uh, exchange you're trading on? Generally, yes. They will have somewhat different buy uh, blocks because it pulls from the exchange. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't know about this, you guys, super low volume. Uh, we do have it on our watch list in uh, our other class because it's in that sector that we like. But for now, it's just too much. These topping tails tell me there's there's sell pressure. So, you know, when in doubt, we can stay out. And this thing is dry. This is my nemesis today, this toolbar that will not stay out of my way. Okay, I exact will put that away. Uh, we've got chilies. We'll wrap this up here after this and let you guys get on with your day here. So chilies in a nice uptrend here. Let's look at it on a weekly time frame. Um, it is, you know, here's the thing. It's a bit overbought, but I do like that the 21 and 50 week are about to cross, but this market's feeling very weak. This needs a very simple trend line saying no, right? You need to be above that. We need to be up in this range and retest that. So uh, Chili's, uh, I would sell here. Um, if it pops above, and I'll talk to you, Alex, because you know, but this to me is suspect on this weekly time frame. It's overbought. If it can, if it can break above, likely profit taking will will reject. So you'd what you do? Buy it back lower, and always keep a moon bag. All right, so that's uh, Chili's there. And let's see what else we have. I should have kept that chart up, though, because uh, that's what we wanted the default to be. And uh, this is CHD. You don't want that. Blur. Did we look at Blur? I think 
I can't remember. We looked at I exact, we look at chill. You did not look at blur yet. Okay. So let's take a look at blur. Got our indicators. Blur looks interesting. Now, why do I say that? Let me, you know, it's on the 21 day EMA, all but mostly red on the radar, heading down. I got excited prematurely. Premature excitement there. And uh so we had red, red. Uh, look, guys, um, I, I would not try to be catch a falling knife here on any of these. So just skimming through, blurs up 4%. That's why it was on my radar this morning. But everything, it's a sea of red, you guys. Uh, compound, uh, everything is just it's bleeding out. We need to sort of see things settle out in the next couple months. And the money that comes into this market is going to go into Bitcoin. Some of that will flow over. But look at this. Uh, I don't. Uh, we're losing key support levels on INJ, the 50-day EMA, all red. Uh, I am uh, mostly out of all of these and mostly in cash. Okay, I'm holding very little right now because I'm going to catch the bounce. I don't want to. I don't want to hold it all the way down. Uh, I might miss the bottom, so some people like holding. You know, it has happened. I wait too long to get back in, but I just. Better safe than sorry, in my experience. And uh, say, say holding up nicely. Uh, I, I like, I, you know, I want, I'm going to put an alert in here. Those of you, it's, and this is, say is, why is it? Hang on a second. I'm going to pull it up on Coinbase so you guys don't have to go find it on, uh, on uh, crypto.com. And say to the watch list here, we've got it on Crypto Mastery there. Okay, cool. So I'll move say up in the ranks and delete out the other one. I'll put it right in here. Where's that other one there? Get rid of that. So, um, you know, it, it's sort of holding here. I'd want it to know when it get back gets back above, say, 80 cents. Buy into strength is always better. I, I don't like to catch a falling knife. Okay, well, that's all we have time for, guys. And uh, you guys are uh, our uh, champions for staying this long. We're coming up on two hours. Takes forever to render these videos as they get past an hour and a half. We want to make sure we get them up for you in a timely manner. And uh, part of our team is under the weather. Uh, so um, I am going to... Um, okay, what do we have here? So the windows. The, now, some if you have some unread messages. So Perry's giving me some help on this uh, toolbar. Uh, thinks it needs maintenance, has an update or restart email. Uh, I don't know. Is that is that true? So this that's what's triggering this thing to show up because uh, I don't know. You know, this is uh, news to me, but I, I'll look into it, everyone. I will certainly look into it. Thanks for that. Um, okay. Very good, Perry. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, <laughs> we, we, we have... We have a latecomer um, who's just joined, but uh, I apologize. This we have just ended the class, so for anyone that is uh, just joining here, please watch and wait for the replay. This will be on our YouTube channel at Crypto Mastery, and uh, we unpacked a lot of alpha here today. Uh, just a last reminder: make sure to join us Thursday night at eight p.m. You can register at Crypto, uh, sorry, at Moonstream.io/slash free training to get all the details and join us for some more fun. Looking at markets and charts and um, indicators and uh, some other alpha there that, uh, you know, always drop some new gems for you guys that that show up on these. Uh, let's see. And uh, so I like that you make money on your own trades. Yes. Uh, without shilling coins. Thank you, Perry. Yeah, we don't shill coins here. If, if I show something, it's because I like it. I would personally consider investing in it. I will never tell you guys to do anything. Uh, specifically, and uh, we don't shill any coins and get paid for any of that. So, um, you know, we make our, our money, our business runs a good old fashioned way. We earn it every day with quality education. And again, you can go to moonstream.io and look around. Something for everybody. You don't need all of it, although some people, a few of you here, I won't name names, but uh, are in all of these uh, programs. So, um, you know, uh, something for everybody, but we're here to help. So cheers, everybody. Enjoy chatting with you. Uh, thanks for the comments and questions. And uh, again, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, please like and subscribe to that. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, everyone.